when I first saw Baba the Storyteller, he was performing in Carlsbad through their private library system. I was pretty mesmerized when I first came to Theatre Arts a little over two years ago. I said to the board, I think we should focus on story because that's what theatre is. Theatre it starts with story. Why else do it unless you're going to convey a story? And then I saw Baba showing his story, the history of the story of his people, African people, that goes back centuries. And it was so fascinating. I said, if I ever become responsible for programs at theater arts, I'd like to bring him in. He also reminded me that only once before in my life have I ever seen anyone do this kind of thing where you start a poem and then it segues into a story and then it's a jump rope rhyme and becomes a song and then in and out and in and out and I saw one person who's ever done it better than Baba the storyteller and her name is Maya Angelou I saw her 40 years ago 35 years ago and it was the ultimate in goosebump. I hope you'll join me in having some new goosebumps tonight. Please welcome Baba the Storyteller. In Mali, there are a people called Bozo, the Bozo fishermen. They are fisher people. And what they do is they make their living by fishing. They're famous for this. They dive, they fish every which way, they use nets, everything. There was once a bozo fisherman who was out on the water of the Joliba, or what you call, I think you call it the Niger, the Niger. But in Bamara we call it the Joliba. He was on the Niger in his little rickety old boat. And as he was there, the boat started to rock a little bit. Now, as the boat began to rock a little bit and he's fishing, he, he notices that there are these waves coming from every which direction. The waves become so huge that they toss him up in the air and he flies out into the water and his boat is pulled underwater. It sinks. He swims to get on shore and when he gets on shore, now he's looking out at the water and he begins to cry. You see, he's a fisherman. This is how he fed his family. This is the way he cared for his family, his children. He cried. He cried. He cried so powerfully until at one point he heard a voice. The voice was very strange. It was mysterious. It said, Why are you so sad? He looked around, the tears pouring out of his eyes, but he didn't see anyone, no one. Again, the voice was there and he's crying because his life is over. He only knows to use his hands for fishing. All of a sudden, out of this lake, out of the water, out of the Joliba, it rises, comes the spirit of the Joliba. The spirit looks at the man and the spirit says, why are you crying? The man says, I am a fisherman. I know nothing else. And my boat has been taken by the river Joliba. Oh, this benevolent spirit raises a boat out of the water. It's a huge, massive boat. Beautiful, brand new. And the spirit says, is this your boat? The man looks at the boat. He's crying. He says, no, that is not my boat. No. So the spirit takes the boat away. Now the spirit raises an even bigger boat out of the water more immaculate, more beautiful. And he says, is this your boat? Once again, the man says, no, no, that is not mine. The spirit brings another one and another. The man each time admitted they were not his boat. The spirit was very pleased. And the spirit said, because you are such an honest man, I will give you all of these boats. Vati, vati. Needless to say, the fisherman became a very wealthy man. Very wealthy. Having all of these boats allowed him not only to support his family, but it allowed him to support the people of his village, to do many things. 
One day, the fisherman and his wife are walking along the banks of the Joliba by the light of the moon in the darkness. And as they're walking, holding hands, his wife slips into the water. Now it's dark. You can't see very well. And when his wife slips in, you hear the splashing. And he jumps in trying to find his wife because she cannot swim. He's trying to find his wife, following the splashing when the splashing stops. He fears the worst has happened. Bati or bati? He fears the worst has happened. His wife is gone. He climbs back on the shores and he, he looks, but it's too dark. He can't see when he begins to cry and weep loudly. And then he hears a voice. The voice of the spirit of the waters of Joliba. And then the water rises and out of the water comes the spirit of Joliba. She looks at him. She says, what has happened? He says, my wife, my wife, she has drowned in your water. My wife has drowned. The river Joliba turns and turns. And then out of the water, the river Joliba lifts. The most beautiful woman you've ever seen. Ah, uh, shapely, with eyes that burn the soul. The river Joliba says, is this your wife? The man says, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's my wife. Now, Bati Bati. The river Joliba becomes angry. The spirit becomes angry. And the spirit says, you have lied. I thought you were an honest man. You are not honest at all. This is not your wife. And the man says, no. No, spirit of Jolie Bob, please allow me to explain. You see, it is very simple. You see, I thought that each time I said no, you would bring up another woman. <laughs> I am but a simple man. I cannot handle four wives. <laughs> this is why I said yes to the first one. Bati or bati? So you see, ladies, ladies, sometimes men have very good reasons for not telling the truth. Ha, ha, ha.